Hi, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to draw Wednesday Adams using graphite pencils. So let's get started. So these are the art supplies I'm going to use for this drawing and you can pause the video right here to note them down. I draw the outlines using grid method and you can find all the references including this outline grid reference on my Patreon profile. Link is in the description. I recently bought this new Stadler Mars Lumograph 12 pencil set which I'm gonna use and review in this drawing. And as always I'm gonna use these 5 shades of pencils only. The leads look different than any other pencils I've used before so let's see how it goes. So first of all, I'm going to mask the edges of this drawing using a masking tape. It will help you get a straight and sharp border in the end. So starting with the background and first of all, I'm going to take this 2B powder from my homemade graphite powder kit and use it with a bigger dry brush like this to shade the background. If you don't have a graphite powder kit, you can make one at home by watching this video from the cards. Make sure you darken the outline with an 8P pencil to get a proper boundary line for the background shading. The background is darker in the upper portion and lighter in the lower portion. So I'm gonna use this 8P powder with the same brush and darken the upper portion of the background. Take your time and shade it thoroughly to make it as dark as you want. And then use a tissue paper to even out the shade so it would look more plain. And by the way, the real-time version of this trail is available on my Patreon profile. So if you want to see all these details up close and in real time, you can visit my Patreon profile. Link is in the description. Okay, now moving on to the hair and first of all, I'm gonna use this B pencil and add these light directional lines for these segments or clusters of hair. Now I'm gonna use this nail art dotting tool as an indenting stylus to indent these fine lines in between the directional lines you just added, especially in the areas where the hair are shining in the reference image. Then I use the 8P pencil to shade a base layer while keeping the pressure very light. Make sure you maintain a lower angle with your pencil so you won't shade or fill the indentation lines. Then use the same 8P pencil and add these type of faded lines or strokes with pressure technique to fill the darker areas of the hair, just like this. So while adding these strokes, I noticed that the wood of the pencil is too flexible. I even heard a few cracking sounds of lead when I applied some pressure like I do on my Faber-Castell 8P pencil. The lead of this pencil is very soft compared to Faber-Castell or Derwent pencils. And they have a waxy or oily texture which makes it very hard to blend or even erase. So after the shading process, I used my Mono Zero Eraser with a sharp edge to erase the extra shades from the indentation lines. But these pencils really gave a hard time to my Mono Zero Eraser. I had to sharpen it with each and every stroke. So I googled about them and noticed that they are not pure graphite pencils. Stadler tried to make them similar to pencil colors so they kind of have matte finish to them. But they still shine from some angles. So all this hard work to make them matte resulted into making them pretty useless for people like me who work with erasers to add bright highlights. I even used the electric eraser to add these extra bright highlights near the ears but the waxy texture of pencil stained the paper. So I had to use the gel roll pen for them later on. Now for the forehead and eyes, I used the B pencil to add a base layer and blended it using a dry brush later on. Make sure you darken the outlines of the eyes or else they will fade away in the blending process. Then I used the B pencil to fill the eyes and also shaded the surrounding shadowed portions using lighter pressure with same 8P pencil. The overall appearance of this portrait is quite dark, so I used 8P pencil to shade darkly over the base layer to avoid extra steps. But you can use our traditional layering method of 3B or 5B in order to avoid any mistakes or extra dark shades. After blending, I remembered these pencils doesn't even blend like my usual ones. So I used 3B pencil around the extra dark lines to make them look less sharp. I also used the same 3B pencil to add these eyelashes. Normally you can't use lighter grade pencils for eyelashes but these pencils are so weird. Even the 2H pencil looks like a 9B if you press hard enough. At this moment, I was so freaking tired of this blue nonsense that I switched back to Faber-Castell and used the 8P to further darken these extra dark and shadowed portions around the eyes. And then I used the Mono Zero Eraser to add the highlights on the eyelids and tear duct etc. And used the Electric Eraser to add these shines on the iris. Now moving on to the nose and cheek portion and I'm gonna use the 8P to darken these shadowed portions of the face. Again, you can use our traditional layering method for shading. 
I was just so tired of Stadler's mess that when I used the actual graphite, I just enjoyed the process so much that I did the whole base layer with the same pencil. The light is falling from the right so the right side of the face doesn't require so many details. You can use a lighter grade pencil like B or 2H for the shadows here. The overall looks of the lip is also darker than the surrounding. So I'm gonna fill them with a plain base of 8B and also fill the shadowed portions around them with a darker shade. For the neck portion I used the same 8B and filled this pitch black shade on the left. And for the right side you can use a lighter grade pencil like B or 3B. And I also filled the braids and clothing with a base layer of 8B. You can do this step later after finishing the face if you want. As I said earlier, I was just going with the flow because I was enjoying the feel of my old graphite pencils. And by the way, if you want to learn the basics of drawing first, you can join my course on Udemy. I put my course on sale for 5 days of every month. You can check the link in the description to see if the sale is going on right now and get enrolled as soon as possible. So anyways, when you are done with the shading process, grab your dry brush and lightly blend the shades to flatten the paper texture and get a smooth overall look on the shades. Don't put too much pressure on the brush as it will scrape off the shades and lighten them instead of blending. And then use your needle eraser to pick up any extra graphite from the highlighted areas and make the facial features look more prominent prominent and 3D. Don't worry about the smudging of shades at this moment. Just get the overall tones right and you can blend the barriers in between the shadows and highlights later on. After the highlights, I used a tissue paper to further flatten the base layers in the highlighted portions like left cheek, nose and right portion as a whole. And then I used the perfection eraser or pencil eraser and added these fine details and highlights to make the facial feature look more prominent and sharp. I also added the highlights in the lower lip with perfection eraser. And then I used the 5P pencil for the extra dark shades and texture in between. Just like this. I also added these extra sharp highlights using my jelly roll pen and lightly blended them with a mini dry brush to get a smooth overall look. Now for the freckles on the nose and cheeks, I used my 8 pencil with a lighter pressure and filled the area with these random big and small dots and then I used a tortillion or blending stump to blend them lightly to merge them with the skin tone. You can also lighten them if you want using a tissue paper or add white texture lines in between using your perfection eraser. It's totally up to you. For the braids, I used the 8P to fill them with a base layer and then I used the sharp tip eraser to add these light highlights around each segment. Just like this. You can also add individual white hair around them using a pointy end of the eraser. They will look cool. I repeated the exact same process for this left braid. And for the collar, I filled it with a base layer first using a B pencil. And then used the 3B or 5B pencil for these dark and shadowed portions in between. And then I used the tissue paper to blend these layers and make them as smooth as possible. You can also lighten some of these areas in between using a needle eraser if required. I'm gonna repeat the same process on this right collar. Now for the clothing, I used the 8P pencil and filled the surrounding portion of the braids with this pitch black shade. And by the way, you can also use your 8P graphite powder with a dry brush to shade the clothing. It will work the same. And then use the mono zero eraser or any other sharp tip eraser and add these white hair or highlights on the braids, just like you did in the upper portion. And then use the 8P pencil with a sharp tip to add these black hairs in between and also lighten the white hairs where required, just like this. And in the end, I used the general pen to add this flower pattern on the clothing and use a small dry brush to blend them lightly to match them with the surrounding, just like this. I used the same general pen for the buttons in this middle portion and repeated the same process on this right side as well. And with this last step, we are done with this realistic drawing of Wednesday Adams. It takes so much time and efforts to create this tutorial, so please leave a like if you enjoyed this one. It helps me a lot as an artist. So if you want to get the real-time tutorial of this drawing, you can visit my Patreon profile. And if you want to learn the basics of drawing first, you can join my course on Udemy. All the links are in the description down below. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.